Alright, All right, now that the uh, glass is dried on the bottom or on the end of the tannin, um, we're going to grind it down and we're going to fine tune that tannin. The tannin is just the lower piece. Of, this will be the male part of this uh, socket takedown system. We're going to trim this up and then we're going to uh, try to square this up and get it even all the way around and recess it enough to where um, it's ready to accept a socket. Turn the dust collector on. got to do to make it even all the way around. I'm also going to cut this tip square. Um, basically this should be a very close to a straight tenon. So in theory if it were to get a little bit looser, we cut this square to allow it to slide even tighter back into the grip if it ever gets loose. Um, it also takes away a, a sharp point there that um, it would probably wear on over time, you know, so we're going to take that out of it. I've got a little bit more trimming to do. Take your time at that stage. Uh, this is probably as critical of a stage as there is as far as um, a point where you could go too far with it and actually damage it to where um, you couldn't make corrections and still use the um, the tenon for this particular takedown. But quite honestly, I've never damaged one to the point of no return where I couldn't fix it. But uh, it does go a little quicker with the uh, grinding wheel like that, but you can also damage one quicker. Also now, I'm going to finish drilling the holes through the glass. You can see where they are on the top side of the tenon. 
and uh, I'm going to finish drilling those all the way through so that they'll meet with the holes on the other one. Um, and then we're going to take it over to the vise and the mic. Now, I've got the top side of the sleeve. I've got to do a little bit of grinding on it. This is just a little preliminary and I'm going to drill it at the same time. But when I get the uh, tenon to the size I want it, I'll actually put the two together temporarily and mark the glass on the upper part of the limb and our upper part of the sleeve so I can grind to make the two mate closer. First thing I've done here was I've relieved it all the way around, close to up underneath the shelf, and that's about oh an eight, about three sixteenths of an inch in most places. And from here in the throat, I'm going to take it out a little bit so I can grind the rip back in there. We just have to make sure we relieve this enough to where um, when we put the socket, put the wrap back on it, that we've got enough room to make this uh, the layering of the fiberglass and carbon thick enough to be uh, supported. Now that I've got that all the way around like that, pretty much level, I'm going to take it down a little bit further and just kind of taper it. Now this is not done, but this is pretty close. I've roughed it up a little bit, I tapered it down, and I put a few notches in there or something just to, for the fiberglass to kind of grab down into. And um, when I make my sleeves, I try not to get, I mentioned this earlier, but I try not to grind through the glass that runs through the socket, um, the backside glass in there. If you do, it's not the end of the world, but you know, I think that it's stronger if, in having our wrap overlap that. Alright, now I'm going to set up right here and uh, finish drilling out the holes. so we can true up our tin. Normally what I do is I start off on the back side of the tin and the part that faces away from you and I like to get this as straight and true as possible. I'll normally make it flat. I might round the edges a little bit but I'll normally make that flat.
take my file and wrap some sandpaper around it and just go back and forth on the top here trying to get a nice straight flat spot. The more time you spend getting this tenon parallel or with a very minute taper from the bottom towards the top, the easier it's going to be to take it apart and put it back together. Nicer the socket you're going to end up with. Now granted a lot of this is done by eye, but if you're building bows, you should have an eye to be able to line a lot of this stuff up anyway. Try to get a little bit of light behind me. And hold my square up. As usual, I've got a little extra down here at the bottom. You have to do it several times normally before you get it just right. Okay, that's pretty close. A little bit more towards the top. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, we're going to straighten out this uh, tin a little bit with pad sander. And the way that the sandpaper rolls over on the edge of the pan sander helps out. It'll also clean up that shoulder right there a little bit. And before we get there, you've got a little bit of um, glass sticking out where you drilled your hole. You want to clean that up. I just normally take a knife and dig it out a little bit just so it doesn't stick out above the top edge. some fairly coarse grit on that to start off with. Um, that was 80 grit and all I'm trying to do is you, uh, hold the pad sander on there to try to square it up a little bit. Uh, you just kind of have to have the eye for that or practice. And just like I checked out the front I'm going around the outside edge to see how square it is so I don't have any dips and valleys in there. If that's hourglass shape you're going to end up with a uh, more difficult time taking the socket apart and then uh, when you make a sleeve the inner part of the sleeve will fit in there it'll just have kind of a snap type fit you'll have to sand it down later and end up with a looser socket 
This one looks pretty good. This is about as good as I've done on a first time run. Um, normally I go back and forth several times. Now I've got my handy mic and I am going to mic it down near the base. Mine just so happens to read 800, 0.802 actually. And then I'll lift it up a quarter of an inch. It's 0 0.808, 812, 8.16. Okay, and that's no good because that's going the wrong direction. So I'm going to take a look at it and determine which side is a little bit wider. It's got to be, it can be, it's alright if it's wider at the bottom a little bit, but it cannot be wider at the top. Check that out. 802, 808, 812. Hasn't done a whole lot yet. I'm not as I've been filing I've been trying to stay away from the bottom edge of it because it's the smaller part anyway. 800, 797. That looks pretty good. Alright, so we've got it nearly parallel but maybe tapering a little bit towards um, the end. I've also sanded that edge a little bit to take the, the sharp cut away from it. Now I'm gonna make the uh, back to the belly and I've got 1570 on here those numbers are not magic every one I do is a little bit different than the last one because it's all done by hand alright this one tapers about ten thousandths and that to me is too much I want it to be nearly perfectly parallel if anything a couple thousands taper from the low end to the top Check that again. 1558, 1558, 1556. Well, that's as good as it gets. So, recapping here, um, I mean, clean, I don't spend a lot of time cleaning this shoulder up uh, for the simple reason that if I do cut a groove into the lower part of the tenon, not only does it weaken the tenon just a touch, but also makes it more difficult to pull the bow apart. It's going to be hidden uh, when it's together and for the most part the um, pad sander or the orbital sander is going to clean it up as you're sanding the sides. 
I like to round the top edge of this glass so that it just kind of inserts into the socket better. Clean the holes out on the glass side so they don't hold the, the other part of the bow off of it. You want to make sure that the belly and back are as nearly parallel as you can get them. I'm nearly perfect. If anything, just a hair smaller here towards the top end than what it is on the bottom end. On the sides, nearly parallel. Um, if, but again, also you could taper a little bit from the low end to the high end on the sides. It won't hurt anything. But that is a nearly finished socket. Or a nearly finished uh, tenon. I'll spend a little bit more time with this one later. Um, just so I got it, you know, to where I'm completely happy with it. No, I don't have to worry about it. Um, but I'm sure it would work just the way it is. I just want it to be a little bit better. When I'm done at that stage, then I'll take uh, thin super glue, and Boyer CA thin super glue. If you don't have this, um, some you know that's available from some of the Boyer sites, um, Boyer material sites. I also sell it on my site. It uh, penetrates well. And it's get down, it'll get down in the pores. I'll put two or three coats on here and make sure I get it down into the shoulder. Uh, good, and that way when it's time to spray my release agent um, on the tannin, I don't have to worry about the release agent soaking down into the wood. I have in the past not used the super glue to seal the tannin first and I've sanded everything the way I would normally do and when I hang it up to spray my spray finish on it, have it beat up where the tenon was at because this stuff soaked into the wood. I've got another bow here. Well, it's sort of bottom end. I guess I'm jumping ahead a little bit. Alright, I'm going to clean the holes out on the bottom end. Lay the bow back together on the bench. Put these toothpicks I've got here, they're the same size as the holes, back in and assemble the bow back together and get it to where it fits good. On the bench, hold everything down into place and I'll take this razor knife and I scratch the glass from that side, carefully flip it over. And do the same thing on this side. Where this upper part is bigger than the bottom part. And I don't know if you could see those lines right here or not. Where I scratched it. But it shows me that this part of the tenon right there is a little bit thicker. I don't have to take the whole tenon down to that level. But at least down at this edge and that way that the glass will transition in there the, the wrap will transition in there nicely and we won't have any big gaps in that point making it weak so once I ground that down this one's pretty much done and you see on here I've ground it in the throat here a little bit more and tapered it up and I have it's a little bit thicker up here around the edges of the riser and I taper that down towards the lower end of the bow and that's going to give me a thicker socket in this area. Alright, when I get that one just the way I want it, I'm going to put super glue on the tenon, let it dry up. Then I'm at, that brings me to this stage, this is a bow that's uh, very similar to that one. And um, the super glue is dried on it, but when it does that, it leaves it kind of rough. So what you're going to want to do is just sand it lightly. You don't want to take that super glue off of there, but you want to smooth it out. Otherwise you may not be able to pull the socket apart. It doesn't have to be perfectly smooth. It's, it won't be that bad. But right now it feels like uh, about 120 grit sandpaper when that super glue dries. So I'll go around and normally just sand this by hand. 
And the only thing I'm sanding here is the tenon itself. Okay, I've got that pretty smooth there on the tenon to the point where I'm happy with it. I think we'll be okay. And a little spot right here. Again, there's no sense in being in a hurry. Get it as close as you can get it by hand. You can do a quite, good, quite a good job if you take a little bit of time. Alright, the can says that um, you know one coat, one thin coat will do and a, little, a lot will be no better than a little. But this is also talking about um, putting it on molds that aren't porous. So when I spray this, I spray down into that shoulder right there and I spray the rest of the tenon. Make sure I get everything uh, covered well. And even out here on the outer part of the bowl a little bit. You'll sand all that off so you really don't have to worry about getting any super glue around there. Um, not a big deal. Make sure you got good coverage. Let it sit and dry for 10-15 minutes or until dry. Then I'll put a second coat on it um, when that's good and dry. And once it's completely dry I'll put it in my jig. This is one of a couple of jigs I've got. You can see that it's um, been reinforced with several pieces. This is Epe. It's got some glass in there. Um, it's pretty solid. I'll take it over to my belt sander, my edge sander, and I true this top surface up to make sure that it's parallel. I check it on the on the steel plate, and uh, you can make this. I've made all my jigs myself with my woodworking equipment. It's not it's not very critical. The one thing you want to do is make sure that when you make the jig that the opening is not much bigger than what it takes to build the socket where the wrap is between my fingers there and it's got to be able to go from side to side on your riser up in, above and below the socket to where you can clamp that. Okay. Um, while this is drying, we're going to move on over and I'm gonna, I've got another bow that's already in a jig and it's ready to wrap. And we're going to wrap that and we're going to come back and, and uh, spray this again off camera. You know, it's nothing to the spring. And until I've got this uh, socket just the way I want it, and then on camera I'm going to show you how I put it in the jig. Make sure that everything's right. Alright, we're going to cut away and then I'm going to... Uh, come back when we're wrapping the, the other socket.